with Nick Fuentes, who is a legitimate, he's a legitimate uh, uh, white supremacist. Um, Nick Fuentes. Um... <laughs> with N word dropping white nationalists. Um, you know, I, I, I never whenever um whenever anybody says here, let's just go over here. Whenever anybody calls somebody like a white nationalist or a white supremacist or a Nazi whatever they want to say about people, I'm usually like hold on. Is that what they are, or do you just not agree with what they're saying? And it's like, well, what you you read a little bit about this person, and it's like, oh, they they just don't agree with what you're saying. So there, of course, you're a Nazi. Uh, but this guy is uh, is legitimate. Go back to your grandma's basement. That that's how I kind of feel about him. Um, this dude is legitimate, a fucking white supremacist. He sort of. Uh, he was part of the Tiki Torch, uh, the Tiki Torch uh, Nazis in um, in Charlottesville. The guy Jai Roper Army, the guy Roper Army, is looking to make white. Okay, um, form alt right to Groper. So. Hopefully there's no, like, terrible words in this. Uh, during the white nationalist movement... Who is this? What is this? I don't know who this is. This is Make America Great Again. I, what is that? It was something... I-R-E-H-R dot org. I don't know what these are, but we'll take everything we read with a grain of salt. Uh, during the 2016, the white nationalist movement began a period of substantial growth that has not yet been abated. Ugh. Um... The growth has been uh, occasioned by a number of factors. The polarization of the population along political, geographic, religious, and racial lines. The anti-immigrant se uh, sentiment that is settled into a large swath of primarily white population, which I, I, I'm not anti-immigrant, but it is weird that lots of fentanyl has just been coming right over the border. Like the the our border is 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 what like the Soviet Union dreamed of, the days when they could just walk a fucking spy right over the board. This is this is this is real shit. This is real shit. Like our borders are pretty much open, and and people are just walking in, just whatever. And, and again, I'm not against. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, the border is is safe and secure, right? It's it's all good. All good, guys, because uh, Pamela Camelson uh, said so. What is her name? Kamala pa Pamelson? What? Kamala, Kamala, whatever. Pff, weird lady. Um, and, and so I'm not trying to turn this into some, like, you know, anti-immigrant thing because it's not, I'm not. Like, I come from immigrants, like, my, my family. I don't agree with open. Come to Europe and see what open. Yeah, no, you're, you're right, Moving Dutchman. You're right. And, and like, when you look at France and, like, how cultures have clashed in, in like, really terrible ways and, um, you know, some neighborhoods aren't even safe for women to walk in anymore because, you know, different cultures move in. Um, you know, I don't even know what it's like in Germany. Like, if, I'm sure it's some weird shit going on over there. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Moving Dutchman. Um, but w we're sort of adapting, adopting those things, but you can still get kicked out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's not an anti-immigrant thing personally, because I do feel like there is a place for everybody. Uh, and I would like to think that there's a place for everybody here in America. I know that cultures do come together here and sometimes they clash and sometimes people don't get along and that's just how it works. But for the most part, I, I you know, people who come over here and do it right. Are, and it, like, and it's interesting when you talk to actual Mexicans, you know, cause we're talking about Mexico. I don't think anybody's worried about Canada, <laughs> 
I don't think anybody's worried about Canadians coming through. But you never know. The Canadians could be, like, smuggling over fentanyl from, you know, the, the, the trench that's over there. The, whatever that thing is called. You know, they can sneak it in. And it, the sneaky Canadians. We all want to go to Mexico sooner or later. <laughs> no, not me. The homeland. Uh, I, actually, Mexico is not that bad. You better calm down with that shit, Naders. Um, uh, yeah, fuck that. Uh, fuck Latinx. That's the worst goddamn garbage fucking white elitist made up bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Um, but it's like, I think that the, that the borders can be monitored and it can be, you know, safe and it can be a place where people can come over and start a new right life, but do it correctly. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I don't mind immigrants. Like, that's not the thing. It would be so fucking uh, hypocritical. I, I'm second generation, man. Like, or first generation? I don't fucking know. You know, like, my mom comes straight from the motherland. So, I... I I, I have no problems with people coming over, starting a new life, starting a family, all that good stuff that comes with the idea of what America is, uh, although America is horribly captured uh, by by just the worst of the worst people. But um, yeah, so there's nothing wrong with immigration. Immigration is great. Nick Tronic, welcome in, my friend. Good to see you. Welcome in. Uh, but anyways the borders it's a, it's a weird issue but in any case this is all we're we're, we're we're going back here to nick fuentes here so uh the report about the new white nationalist marketing strategy known as <laughs> marketing strategy his name is groiper i don't know how to say that it follows efforts of white nationalists uh to mainstream their movement led some leaders like white nationalist millennial richard spencer to recast themselves as so-called alt-right the intentionally nebulous term was meant to attract a wider swath of far right. So if you guys remember this in Charlottesville, there was a bunch of tiki tortures uh, being marched through the city, which is ugh. Uh, this is uh, an unsanctioned late night march through the campus of University of Virginia saw a mass of a few hundred tiki torch brand, uh, brandishing participants chant. Jews will not replace us and white lives matter as they encircled the Confederate monument. Um, the next day, the Unite the Right rally was uh, brought together even more angry white nationalists, assault rifle, toting militia members, Confederate battle flags, yada, yada, yada. Where's Nick Fuentes? That's, this is what I want. I just wanted Nick Fuentes. Where is he? So Nick Fuentes was a part of that whole movement and the Unite the Right thing. And so uh, he's also, again, he says the N-word all the time. Um, he, he's literally, I've seen videos where he's literally talking disparagingly about black people and like putting himself up above people. So the whole idea of Kanye hanging out with him, I, I don't get it. I don't want to get it. Uh, I, I'm not someone who is easily, who wants to cancel people. Like, I, I feel like Nick Fuentes, if he wants to be a white nationalist, I don't give a fuck. Let him do what he wants to do. Um, it, that's his shit. But I don't want to see that. And I don't want to support that. Paid for by the Democrats. <laughs> Yo, that whole FTX thing right now is wild. Wild. It's wild. It, I don't know if you guys know anything about this whole FTX thing that's going on with the, the crypto um, platform. Uh, what's his name? Sam something. I can't remember his fucking name. But he is... there. The New York Times is touting... He basically ran a Ponzi scheme using these made-up tokens that you could buy called FT, FTTs or something. And they weren't backed by shit other than we have the capital to back it up. Just to find out, it's basically a pyramid scheme, and he basically Bernie made up. It's 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 the worst stealing of people's money since Bernie made off, and and this motherfucker is down in the Bahamas just partying, and the New York Times is writing these fluff pieces. He's like, oh, he was just a young millennial. He didn't know, or he didn't know, and he, he was just altruistic and all this shit. Meanwhile, he's directly connected to the WEF. He, he was the biggest donor to the Democratic Party. And, of course, the New York Times, which is just the mouthpiece for the Democrats, is just fucking, is just sucking this dude off. Like, he is, like, the, the next coming of Jesus. Like, it is disgusting, the corruption. Like, meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, fucking you have the the football Tom Brady's divorced ass. Uh, uh, he's out there apologizing for for him trying to get people to invest in this stupid fucking company. Insider trading is a real yeah. Uh, Nancy Pelosi. Bleh, uh, I hate and I hate talking about like Democrats and stuff because I'm not a Republican either. I'm just, I, I, you guys have to know that by now. It's just that when you see corruption, you have to call it. The whole fucking thing is gross. Anyways, just just fun times. Anyways, uh, we're, Nick Fuentes is a real life uh white supremacists and so when i see kanye walking around with him and going to trump's thing which i don't have a problem with him hanging out with trump or talking with trump, i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck but it is weird that he has this like straight up white supremacist dude like hanging out and it's weird that his last name is fuentes i don't know like is he mexican or something i don't know if he's like some kind of if some kind of brown's in there but like in any case, he he is uh, he's gross. He's a gross, dude. So it, it does put questions, and and I, I will not be voting for Kanye West. <laughs> now, if that's who his fucking people are, like I I'm even willing to forgive you know Milo Yiannopoulos. He's a little shit starter, but I'm 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 not I I'm not I, I can't I can't anymore. I can't. Uh, anyways, let's get back to it. So I just had to get that out because it it did bother me that he was running around with this white supremacist dude. And, um, you know, I'm not one to cancel people out of my life like that, or especially artists that I really, really like and respect. But it is a little weird. It's a little weird, Kanye. Why, why are you really hanging out with white supremacists? That's weird. Anyways, let's get into this. So we were talking about the Balencia sc- scandal um, Friday, and it, it it involves those images of children in bondage. There's all kinds of uh, so it's this which I, I hate even showing on on the screen, but this is what it is. These poor little kids. Meanwhile, there's fucking alcohol, bo- like empty liquor, champagne flutes. Like, what is this? What what is what is this supposed to prove? What what is this advertising? And apparently these children are children of Balenciaga workers. I remember when someone called Milo racist, he said, "Honey, I've had more black cock in me than you." <laughs> That's right. Now, I don't think that Milo Yiannopoulos is racist. Uh, I think that he's just a very he he's just a shit starter. He he's a a, a malcontent, and he fucking. Uh, uh, you know, he got canceled because he was on Team Trump and he was gaining popularity, he was gaining steam, he was gaining followers, and he had to be taken down a peg. And so when he said something about he was downplaying pedophilia because when he was underage, he had relations with someone who was of age and he sort of defended it. And so everyone was like, that's it, you got to go. And he got canceled. And now he's on the campaign for yay which is very funny uh but again i don't i don't hate milo and i don't hate nick Nick fuentes i don't don't hate anybody uh but but i just i don't care for that kind of bullshit i'm not into you know just this free form use of the n-word which i don't care if he uses it right but it's like um why is he associated with Kanye then? So what what's the deal here? What who's getting what? And he's young, you know. He's a young man. He's he's twenty four years old, and uh, it's just strange to me. It's just strange. Why why are you hanging out with this dude? Um, you know, I would never support that guy. No, but pff, he's free to drop n bombs all he wants. I'm surprised he hasn't been fucking beaten in the streets. But which I don't encourage, and I don't think should happen. But my God, I mean Pamela, Kamala. Um, anyways, uh, let's get into I, this fucking politics, man. Um, so Balenciaga, if you guys remember this BDSM thing, there was also, um, some forms in there. Uh, what was the paperwork? Maybe it will tell us more in here. Okay. So from friend to foe, Kanye West, once, uh, one of Balenciaga's biggest supporters and collaborators is speaking out about the controversy surrounding the brand's latest ad campaign, which features children modeling teddy bears shaped bags with bondage accessories. Stopped by paparazzi after church on Saturday, 
Uh, West seemed to call on his fellow stars to denounce the lux- uh, the luxury label, which cut ties with the rapper in October following his series of anti-Semitic remarks. This shows you all celebrities are controlled. You don't see no celebrity talking about Balenciaga's situation, which you didn't. And it was only recently that you had people coming out and talking about this. Like, what? why would anybody want to not t- speak out on this? Like Kim Kardashian, which I don't give a shit about kim kardashian but it took her several days to respond and she's one of the people who are like wearing her shit and wearing balenciaga uh there was also some paperwork just in case you guys missed it there was also some paperwork uh that was referencing look at this is Bl- kim kardashian the the fucking the prototype for a, a good plastic surgeon Um, both ex-wife Kim Kardashian have been extremely supportive of the brand and creative uh, director Demna in the past, both by appearing in Balenciaga campaigns and shows by wearing the brand almost exclusively. Look at this. Look at this. What? What is that? What is... Like, that's fucking disgusting. It's fucking gross. And, you know, like, I don't really have too much... I, you know, I'm not one of these people who's like, save the children. You know, I, I do care about kids and stuff, but it's like people can do whatever they want with their kids. I mean, don't harm them but or, or diddle them, but it's like if they want them in some weird thing like this, that, that's up to them. But it's interesting that the company is now suing the, the producers of these, sh- these sets um, for $25 million. So it, it, it's really odd that they're trying to push themselves away from it and, and blame it on someone else as if they didn't approve of the fucking campaign themselves, which is really disturbing to me. Um, Bella Hadid, who starred, starred in the recent Balenciaga campaign, quietly deleted those photos, <laughs> quietly, from Instagram, Nicole Kidman, who's been getting flamed in her comments, uh, who also appeared in an advertisement, still has the images up, Though many commentators have called on the pair to make a public statement, which they're probably just, I don't know. West has a long history of Balenciaga, having worked closely with creative director Demna for years, teaming up with him for a Yeezy Gap collaboration and making his modeling debut last month at Balenciaga Runway Show in Paris. During the same video interview, he chastised celebrities for staying silent about the controversy. The gold digger rapper appeared to be wearing a reworked Balenciaga design embolized with his Yay24 logo, which he said he plans to sell for to the masses for $20, which sign me up, <laughs> which I'm so torn. I'm so torn. He hasn't really been with that Nick Fuentes guy in a while, so maybe he didn't know him that well, but it's still like, why? Why? Um, so we're going to watch this video, but I wanted to, um, what are the documents that it's like Ashcroft versus something, um, Balenciaga documents in photo Ashcroft V something. So Balenciaga is facing backlash for posting photos of children. Look at none of this. It doesn't even come up. A document. Where's the document? Here's it. Here's it is. So it's a document from a case called um, Ashcroft versus what? What is the? Um. So they deleted all that shit off their their site. But what's the name of the document? This is the document right here. All right, coolinators, thanks for stopping through, buddy. Oh yeah, here it is. The court the court in Ashcroft concluded that Child Pornography Prevention Act in 1996 violated free speech. The CPPA previously prevented the distribution and possession of pornography in virtual images and films where adults were depicted as minors. Um, so that that's pretty 
uh, so what is it? Okay, so Ashcroft versus Free Speech Coalition, a case that established virtual child pornography is protected by the First Amendment. <sighs> See now this, but this harms people, and like I feel like if it actual does, if it actually does bring some kind of physical harm to somebody, because this is physical. If you're having children, you know, doing terrible things on camera, or that that is not free speech. So um that that's that's harming people uh others noticed one teddy bear being held by a child that had panda eyes a term known to describe the bruising of the skin around the eyes as a result of injury balenciaga's homepage child with bdsm stuffed animal with panda eyes white rabbit on the bed that picture of the bag look innocent right um zoom in and it it's what appears to be a court document arguing some type of sexual misconduct and pornography. So it, it, it's really weird. It's really weird. It, it's really weird, man. Uh, anyways, so Kanye is also, he's also uh, talking shit about Elon Musk because not only does he want, you know, other celebrities to speak out against it, but he's also talking shit about Elon for not allowing Alex Jones back on to Twitter. And, you know, Elon Musk has this weird thing, not weird. Elon Musk is um it, you know, he's saying that he wants to um he wants he wants Twitter to be an open platform for free speech and but yet he is not letting Alex Jones back on the platform because he personally doesn't like Alex Jones because he lost a child and because Alex Jones said those horrible wrong things about Sandy Hook that he's not allowed back on the platform which I think it's bullshit. Uh, I know Alex Jones is wild and he's, uh, you know, he can say some ridiculous shit, but he can also say some truthful shit that ends up being true. You know, he, he, he does spout some things and, and he's, a uh, he is a, um, he's American. And he has the right to speak and not be deplatformed for just his opinions and stuff, but he owes what? $50 billion or something, <laughs> $50 billion. Let, let, what the fuck? So we'll watch a little bit of this video here. Hey, hey, hey it was good. Okay, to me, if I wouldn't like you and I wasn't big boss of Twitch, I would ban you too. <laughs> I agree. I would ban me too. I've been kicked out of every bar in this old town. Yeah, that don't make sense. I haven't. But I've been kicked out of a lot. But not for a long time. Um, it's good. I think this is that's Milo. You're doing well. Milo's a service. Yay, twenty-four. I talked to the pastor, and he came to me. He said, "Yo." Uh, seems like these people who think you don't like Jewish people and I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you and I said I know <laughs> I know and I said I have problems with certain business practices and he said well it's okay <laughs> like yo yay what's going on bro <laughs> And I said, it's not okay. It's not okay. This is the whole thing. It's like, we've now seen everything that happens if you speak up on these contracts and you speak up on all of the dealings that have been done and you point this stuff out. It's like... I mean, I don't... I don't. I, that's not why people got mad at you, Kanye. You know that shit. <laughs> you can point out bad business deals all day long. All day long. But as soon as you start just like... Cl clustering a bunch of people together and saying that they all run the media and they're all uh, even though there is truth behind it in, in a sense it, to, to say that it's this big cabal of people who get together in some smoky room making decisions and how to destroy yay i mean uh it's just it's just, it's not 
it's not how it goes. Um, although there was, you know, collusion, um, they did shut down his bank accounts. They did shut down, um, you know, his, his businesses and stuff like that. But it, it's not the, just the Jewish people who did that. It's everyone involved who was like, wow, dude, you got to chill. So and just let's clarify that. They tried to destroy me. And Jesus is the way and the life. Uh oh, same old. We just lead with love. All right, let's see what Samo has to say. Uh, with the repercussions of speaking against a certain class of people and a certain class of people being more protected than endangered animals, I don't know, seems uh, kind of scamish. Uh, well, it, it's there. there is truth, right? There is truth behind the idea of... Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of Jewish folks who do work in banking. There is a lot of Jewish folks that work in the movie industry. But you know, the the to cluster them up and start saying, you know, they run this cabal and stuff. I, I, you know, it's out it's out of line. It's out of line. Um, but yeah, I do get what you're saying. I think that Dave Chappelle did a really good job of sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, of of saying what he said on SNL. Um, you know, he, he, if it, if it's, if it's a group of black people, it's a gang, if it's a group of Italians, it's a, it's the mob, but if it's a group of Jewish people, you know, you can't, you know, people get classified in these different, uh, with negative connotations. And then when it comes to the Jewish people, which I would, I guess I would just counter that with the idea that the Jewish folks have been, you know, historically blamed and it has led to them getting, you know, uh, exterminated. So I, I can see why people would want to keep that, uh, keep that kind of rhetoric uh, and limited. But we should also limit the the negative connotations of how we talk about black people and how we talk about Mexican people as well. And we should hold them up in the high esteem, is which which it's getting there, but. Not like this, not like, you know, like when the Jewish people get, get dunked on, it's, you know, it, you, <laughs> it, it, it almost seems like it's, they're an untouchable class of, of folks. And, um, you know, there, there's going to be bad people in every, in every, uh, uh, uh race, religion, ethnicity, fucking gender. There's just bad people out there. The bank accounts happened before this came out, and uh, out they just chose to break it as an active news source. That happened in 2021. Delayed information on purpose. Um, with J.P. Morgan, no, I thought that was pretty recent, though. What up, good sir? Hope you <laughs> mighty mighty, my dude. Anyways, let's let's keep hearing because I, I do. <laughs> It's fucking, um, he does talk shit about Elon Musk, which is hilarious. We love all people. I, I, I'm, I'm known to be one of the most forgiving people. We've seen me forgive people. I can't, you know, it's like, I, I can't hate anyone. We saw Adidas freeze my accounts. We saw me get debanked. This is, and you think if that can happen to someone like me, what's happening to all of America? Which I think this is a good point too that he's making is like, look, the, the, it, it is wild that you can lose so much for saying words. Um, and on a smaller level, on a, on a more of a micro level, there are people who are losing their jobs. There are people who are losing, you know, their positions and their status in their community because of, of, you know, something that they put on Facebook or, or something that they was, you know, was allegedly said somewhere, you know, um, you know, depending, I think it's a subjective thing. I think it's case by case, right? Like if somebody just is making a stupid joke, and it and it's not like horribly over the top racist, you know. It's, there's nothing 
the, you know, to, to say that your life is over is rude. But if you're on line and you're just n-word 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 edward edward i mean then you know maybe there should be some kind of repercussions to your actions take that shit to 4chan or to whatever you know wherever the 8chan or wherever that one any of the chans take it over there there's a whole category for you to just drop n-bombs and get that out uh, again i don't if people want to be asshole racist in their own personal life, that's fine. But once it starts spilling out into the public, that's a whole nother thing. Um, and, and if you're going into weird... Well, canceled! How dare you? Um, I'm starting a whole new lawyer uh, f- firm, royalty rights, travel rights, and American freedom rides for the African-American community. The belated 155 years of freedom of eye for an eye lover. <laughs> For 150 years, African Americans have been free. Here's the idea of the situation. October 16th makes Disney 100 years old, and Disney has been anti-Semitic since the beginning. Has going on toward, yeah. That that's the other thing, huh? They they're allowed to sort of go uh, go ahead. Well, you know, I was talking about that before too. Like if if it was, um, you know. There's so many people who go after the Jewish folks um, in in really harsh ways, and it's mostly white people who are sort of talking freely on this, and they're not losing their whole life. (laughs) Thank you. Yes, fuck Mickey Mouse. Cancel Mickey Mouse. Um, Have you guys ever seen that video of Mickey Mouse making Swiss cheese? I don't know if it's probably appropriate. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, this shit is hilarious. Uh, right here, it comes right up. Mickey's making the cheese. He's making the cheese. <laughs> What the fuck's happening here? What is this? And look at this pervert. This this dude right here is really into it. Like this dude right here is just like, oh yeah, baby. And so is this bird. This bird's like really and this guy's like, what is even happening in here? Why is this even happening? This dude's just happy as horse shit. Anyways. Kanye West is racist. He said in one of his rap songs that he only liked green faces. So his friend circle is the Jolly Green Giant, Incredible Hulk, and the Almighty Dollar. Let's go, let's go. So, you know, Walt Disney has had its own um, its own thing going on. They have some weird shit going on over at Disney. Uh, but, but it is weird how, like, Family Guy sent out mailers and was like, let us into your little Jew club. Uh, you know, like this was physically sent out during Grammy time. And um, a, a actual DVD when people watch things on DVD. And, and you know, Seth MacFarlane is totally fine to keep fucking making movies, making TV shows. But as soon as, as, soon as a, a person of color has anything to say on it, It's the end of the fucking world. You know, like, this motherfucker's gotta go. So I feel like there is some sort of weird racism involved in how um, this whole thing went down. Because there's so many other bigots who talk shit on on the Jewish folks. And um, and for Kanye, yeah, cancel all of them. Mighty Mighty's like, get him out of here, goddammit. Look at the guy in the background. He's like, that's an HR man. (laughs) Take it up with HR. <laughs> Take it up with HR. Don't worry, my brand of comedy will be canceled, but don't worry, South Park is going to continue cranking it out all season. Yeah, and another thing, South Park has been, I mean, oh my God, Cartman is the biggest anti Semite. I mean, there's literally fucking cartoons marching down the street saying fucking doing the hitler thing and and saying i I can't even do the hitler thing i shouldn't be doing the hitler thing stop doing the hitler thing um and literally saying something about the jews in german like i it's it's if it's horrifying but really really funny Uh, (laughs) because 
when you look at it, it's a child who's leading this sort of weird rally. And uh, that makes it funny. But, you know, they're, they're open. It's open season for them. It's just the weirdness of who gets canceled and who doesn't. It's just strange to me. It's strange to me. Uh, okay, so back to, uh, oh, not Glenn Beck. What's happening to all the world? If you have an opinion, even if you speak up, there's so many people that they just, they work in a regular job and they know if they say anything to their manager, then they'll, they'll lose their position, they'll lose their job. Right. You know, they, they tried to destroy me in press. They tried to destroy all of my businesses at the same time and the world saw it and no one's saying anything you know as far as like none of the celebrities so this just shows you all celebrities are controlled you don't see no celebrities talking about the balenciaga situation yeah, right yeah. so that just shows you all of these celebrities out here don't let them influence you in any way because they're controlled by the people who really influence the world there's no such thing as a celebrity influencer. That is mm. that all these people, they don't, they're not serving God. If they serve God, then believe what they're talking about. And my thing that, you know, the Trump, you know. So it's, you know, don't trust people who don't serve God. And, you know, I, I wouldn't, it, I, I could, you can interpret that in many ways, but he actually says Christians and stuff. And it's like. Uh, we get it, Kanye. You love Jesus, um, but that's not all there is, and that's not all, all it's gonna be. Um, it, it, th there's plenty of terrible Christians out there. There's plenty of people who claim to be Christian and are just out there doing the worst possible things you can imagine. And uh, I, I don't know his whole like he just really wants us to be Christian with him, and I'm just like Ugh, that's kind of a turn off. Um, I forgot what my whole point was. That's that's tight. That's real tight. You no, know, I've been a Trump supporter. I went through the trenches wearing a red hat, literally going into exhaustion from people asking me these questions about the red hat. I've been through the trenches with that. And another thing that's really odd about this this culture that's going on is that Kanye West um, wasn't allowed to be a Trump supporter. It's, he's not allowed to be a Trump supporter, and and it's because he's black, right? It's because if you're black and you you support Trump, then you're a white supremacist. I, you know, like it's a very weird thing. <laughs> can can no. Um, like what was her name? Chelsea Handler when she was saying is like, Fifty Cent must have forgot what color he is. Like that that is such a racist concept to to, to put yourself above someone. To think that you know what other people should be doing because of the color of their skin. There's this weird, there's this weird thing. If he doesn't vote the way that that he's supposed to vote, because it, it, it's gross. It's a gross thing, it, and that's like white people who fucking are telling people of color what they should and shouldn't do, and then judging them if they don't do what they're told, which is. That seemed pretty fucking racist to me. Um, here's what I here's where I can fire back. Yeah, yay for not making me vice president as I was promised. I don't trust any organization that doesn't pay taxes. I'll let the small divide. I'll let the smart divide that math question. <laughs> I don't trust any organization that doesn't pay taxes. Um. Oh, I'm not that smart. Ziggy, what's going on? It's just me talking about complex, weird things poorly um, early in the morning <laughs> uh, for you. Good morning. Um, I, I don't think I have a Ziggs thing. I should have a Ziggs thing. Uh, in any case, welcome, Ziggy. Thank you for being here. And um, we're, we're just listening to Kanye some more. Because, you know, it's Kanye or yay. But we're holding to Christian Christ principles first. America is a, tr a Christian country. Another issue I have is the fact that Elon won't this reinstate is, allergies. This is the best part. This is the best part of this whole rant. And one thing I don't like is that Elon Kanye. <laughs> 
Icon nay. <laughs> That's a nay. It was worth a shot. You yay. But the black Republicans are coming heavy and strong. Donald Trump supported uh, an all-black university and gave out scholarships before he left for four to eight years from now. Um, there will be a rise of black Republicans. I think there's already just a rise of, of people of color and Republicans because uh, because of the reaction, because of Trump, right? The world lost their fucking mind, or at least this country lost its fucking mind, and now everything is either, you know, is so extreme. Um, and I think that people of color are seeing that, and they're like, I don't like to be told what I should have to do and yeah uh he did do some cool things for for the black community as well he also fucking he released wheezy come on y'all come on now what is that what is it come on man god damn what was that come on man come on kanye oh no he's bad he wears a hat man oh hey oh uh, I don't. That was my worst impression of uh, Joe Byron. Uh, our our once nine nine sleepy Joe said it best: "If you don't vote for me, you're not black." So let's not talk about our president not being anti-Semite or anything. Yeah, exactly. I, I that to me that that said it all right there. That distills everything down to this idealism of of the of the white of the white knight right like the the because because white people have to come in and save the black people from themselves they have to save the mexicans from themselves because they don't know any better to not vote for them uh is like i i think i think people of color saw that and they're and they're so turned off by that the same thing with the Latinx bullshit, right? It's like some white person came up with that and it was second by some like elitist like Latino person and they're like, yeah, let's do that. It, it, it's, it's, I see it all the time and, and I hear it all the time from, from my friends who are people of color. Uh, I hear it all the fucking time. It's just like, fuck off with that. No one wants to be told how they should think. And, uh, that's exactly what's going on here is is people are being told how they can think and if not you will be banished to whatever and how far does it go uh, if you don't vote this way we shut down your bank account if you don't vote this way you know we don't give you any of our of our, our of our digital currency we shut down your digital currency you know I, it, it's 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 a strange place we're going where we can only think in one one way one way and if you don't think in, if you think have any other ideas or any other opinions you are now a nazi white supremacist like the guy who was running up against governor newsom god fucking that dude I, he has a punchable face as well newsom um y you know like a larry oh, oh what the hell was his name I can't remember his name but he was a black dude who was running the republican against uh against newsom in the recall election and that happened this year and he was being called a white supremacist that don't even make fucking sense to me okay like what the fuck are you even talking about bro uh the church doesn't pay taxes i don't trust the church so kanye is talking about love jesus and god but they don't pay taxes the reverence scheme um in the collection baskets the church is basically a big gofundme religion pyramid scheme yeah and, and i exactly agree with that too Thank you for explaining yourself, Sam. I'm sorry I'm not smart enough <laughs> to get your your turn of phrase. I am just that that kind of basic. Um, yeah, totally. And, and that's the whole thing too, right? Like he's all in on this whole Christian thing. And it's like, uh, okay, but uh, exactly. They don't pay taxes. They, they use that to make money. It's just another way to make money, right? Like it's just another way to fill your pockets. And uh, maybe you sleep well at night because you're spreading the word of God. And I don't have anything pro against that. I'm not trying to talk shit on Christianity or anything like that. But there is corruption within churches, and that happens all the fucking time. Catholic churches, well, we don't even have to start with the Catholics, right? <laughs> we already know those poor altar boys. Uh, they're, they're the ones paying the price. They're the ones filling the basket. Or maybe their baskets are being filled. Hmm. Anyways... 
Uh, so this is the good part right here, where he just randomly goes <laughs> on Elon Musk. <laughs> he goes from one subject to another, just like he so he slips through the he slips he slips into these subjects so fluidly too. It's very it's very interesting and funny. To Jones. See. Yeah, right, let's go back. Look, he's real mad too. Country. Just Another the issue I have is the fact <laughs> that Elon won't reinstate Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones is a Christian, <laughs> but you have a person who doesn't believe that Christ... You know who else is a Christian? Fucking Nick Fuentes. He, he's a Catholic. He, he fucking... He's also a fucking piece of shit. Christ is Lord going to buy an American media outlet right. and picking and choosing who can be on the platform and who can't be on the platform. Right. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen to that. And the reason why I went to this church specifically is my friend Mark, who I met at another church where we're moving the Donda School, we're moving it into a church. He said, Come to this Messianic Jew church that knows the truth that Yash Yahshua yes. is Christ, Amen. that Jesus is Lord. Amen. And that's why I came to this church. And that's the part that I agree with at this church that Jesus is Lord is the only way. So wait, it's a Jewish Messianic church? What? what the fuck is that? So wait, they believe so it's like Jews for Jesus? Is that what this is? And then Messianic? What the fuck? Don't even make sense. Messianic Judaism. Um, uh, the movement of Protestant Christianity uh, is a modernist and syncretic critic movement of Protestant Christianity that incorporates some elements of Judaism and Jewish traditions into ever- uh, evangel evangelicism. Okay, wow. Whew. Uh, it emerged in the 1960s and 70s from the early Hebrew Christian mu movement and was pro uh, prom prominently propelled through the nonprofit organization Jews for Jesus. It, it is Jews for Jesus. There you go. Founded in 1973 by Martin Moish. Moish. Okay. Uh, an American minister under the Conservative Baptist Association. Evangelical. Protestants who identify as Messianic Jews believe that Jesus, referred to by the Hebrew language as Yeshua, Yeshua, which is Joshua in Hebrew, I guess, among uh, adherents, is the Jewish me uh, Messiah prophesied in the Hebrew Bible, and the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament and New Testament are the authoritative scriptures of mankind. Salvation in Messianic Judaism is achieved only through the exception, the acceptance of Jesus as our one, as one Savior, and not through the adherence to Jewish rabbinical law. Ooh, this is a hard one for me today. We speak English good. Uh, belief in Jesus as a Messianic figure, as a yeah Messianic figure, and as divine. God the Son is considered by Jews to be one of the most defining distinctions between Judaism and Christianity. Right. Kanye, I don't think you're understanding what Jehovah Jahar uh, is correct term by eyes wide shut he just described. Eh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a weird one. This is a weird one. Uh, but Jews for Jesus. Okay, so he's he went to a Jews for Jesus church, which is awesome. Uh, I haven't seen this much of the video, honestly. I just stopped after he was talking shit about Elon. It is the only way. Christ is the only way. Christ is the only way. Amen. 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 Jesus is Lord. Love you, Yay. Thank you, Love you, Yay. Have a good one. Love you, Yay. Love you, Yay. Do you know what I should do? I should, I should I should play the the past the plate song. Hold on. Since we're talking about about messianic Jews and stuff, let, let's um, 
uh, what is it called? I don't remember what the name of the fucking song is. Damn it. Damn it! Um, I had, you saved my soul. That's what it's called. You saved my hole. Here we go, guys. This is for all, this is for everybody. Random things that popped in my head when traveling. Boobs, the song, just thought you'd let you know. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, oh my gosh, how was, uh, how was the Philippines, Ziggy? I saw your pictures. Um, you looked like you were having fun. Here we go, guys. It was hot as fuck. Damn, I need some of that right now. Tomorrow I'm starting a religion based on the inner workings of Dr. Seuss. Starting off with Horton Hears a Who and we will end with the Lorax and these books will be the true saying. <laughs> Says Seuss. Oh shit, what is this? Where's the lyrics though? You save my whole... Alright, well, fuck it. That was going to be fun, but... I don't know, fat as fuck, hot as fuck, fat as fuck. Yo, that's good. As long as you're keeping it iry. Iry vibes. Okay, I won't do that ever again. <laughs> All right, so we know what Messianic Judaism. Let, let's finish this video. Uh, food, good. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That's, the, that's, that's, that's how you're living. That's how you got to do it. Well, I'm glad that boobs... So, when you thought of boobs while on vacation, or I don't know if that was vacation, but while you are while you were there, what, what was it that inspired that song in your head? Were you looking at boobs? I mean, like, anytime I see boobs, that's all I, all I want to do is... Which I don't. <laughs> that's not... Every time I see boobs, I just want to grab them. <laughs> that's not... Don't clip that. Um... <laughs> I just got to grab those titties. <laughs> oh my God. What did I see on uh, uh, somebody? Somebody got was getting flamed online because they uh, took their kids to um, to Hooters. And I was like, oh shit. I gave like, my son loves Hooters. <laughs> I think it was on the plane because my phone had no shows on it. <laughs> okay. That's good. The funny thing about it is I haven't seen the medical community not one time bring up their Lord and uh, damnation Satan into the conversation. I need to hear an interview from a church of Satan to balance the scales out. Uh, well, that one school in California is has this thing. So, uh, California school Satan... After School Satan Club. Here you go, Samo. This is for you. No, I don't want that. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, Sacramento B. Well, fuck you. Fuck you. Okay, so we'll go to this religious news website. After School Satan Club at California Elementary School stirs controversy. After School Satan Clubs are sponsored by Satanic Temple, a non-theistic religious organization based in Salem, Massachusetts, of all places, uh, that pushes for the separation of church and state, which I'm all for. Like, why not? Why wouldn't we do that? Uh, that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, an after-school Satan club aiming to teach students about inquiry and rationalism is set to begin in early December at a California elementary school, triggering controversy among parents and guardians who say the club shouldn't be allowed, according to local news reports. After-school Satan clubs are sponsored by the Satanic Temple, uh, a non-theistic religious organization based in Salem, Massachusetts that pushes for the separation of church and state. They meet at a select public school. They meet at select public schools where other religious clubs meet, such as the Good News Club, an after-school program hosted by the Child Evangelism Fellowship to bring the gospel of Christ to children. Eh, 
Uh, the Satanic Temple, which is separate from the Church of Satan, was founded in 2013. It does not worship Satan, and its tenants declared that the freedoms of others should be respected, that people should have control over their own bodies, and this, that scientific facts shouldn't be distorted to fit one's belief. Those are all decent things I can get behind. Uh, the After School Saint Club is to launch on December 5th at the Golden Hills Elementary School in Tehachapi, a city in Kern County, about 115, 115 miles north of Los Angeles, said June Everett, an After School Satan Club campaign director. After School Satan Clubs are... <laughs> It's just a funny fucking sentence. After school Satan clubs are set up to... Re <laughs> after school Satan clubs are just dandy. Uh, after school Satan clubs are set up at the request of local parents, educators, or rather community members, according to the Satanic Temple website. Everett said a parent reached out a few months ago requesting the club, which will gather once a month through May 2023. The fact that others find our club controversial when they have absolutely no issues with other religious clubs operating in their public schools is puzzling to us. It's so weird. A.S. <laughs> yes, that's a good after school Satan. A.S.S. That's uh, it's so weird, right? It's so it's so strange. Why do people care? Uh, said Everett, an ordained minister with the Satanic Temple. Tehachapi Unified S School District Superintendent Stacy Larson, Stacy Larson here, uh, in a November 15th letter obtained by Bakersfield, Californian, oh, the, the, the Bakersfield, Californian, announced the, dis the district had approved the after school Saint Club to host gatherings after school hours in elementary school cafeteria. By law, Larson Everson said the district can't discriminate among groups wishing to use its facilities or distribute flyers based on viewpoint. The superintendent noted that religious groups are among those, uh, those the district has allowed to rent its facility over the years. In 2001, the Supreme Court ruling Good News Club versus Milford Central High School Central School paved the way for after-school Satan clubs to exist in public schools. The high court ruled that schools cannot discriminate against religious organizations offering a club on its facilities. I just want to go start a Satan club just to see. I, I just want to do an experiment. I feel like in California, this flies. I feel like in Ohio, this shit stops dead in its tracks. Like, you don't even get to come in. We're not taking meetings. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> we, we don't do Satan here. Uh, I'm saying the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts have similar so similarities. The Nazi program in Germany. I mean, yeah, I guess always be prepared, right? Um, all right. Anyways, that that's it's, we're sidetracked again, guys. We're sidetracked again. So you know, Kanye's out here. Uh, you know, listening to. You know, telling the Jew Jewish folks that Jesus needs to be a part of the, the, the conversation. I know he didn't say that, but it's, it's, I feel like that's what he's insinuating. Like, I feel it, you know. I just feel like that's true, so it is. Um, it's not. I don't know. Um, anyways, I, I thought it was funny that he's uh, he, he's mad at Elon Musk for, for not letting Alex Jones back on. Now, Alex, uh, Elon... Moss, uh, he, he was, what was he saying? I've held my child in my hands while it died. And, um, you know, what he said about Sandy Hook is unforgivable. So he's not going to allow Alex Jones back on the platform, which is so weird because Elon Musk was like, this is a platform for freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. Naders, welcome back, buddy. Uh, you know, to and so I'm with Kanye on this. Like, if you're going to let fucking Trump back on, if you're going to let uh, fucking what, what's what's the punchable guy's face? The the we don't do Satan, but we do Santa. <laughs> what if you're dyslexic? We don't do Satan, but we do Santa. Uh, well, Santa Christ is the new uh, Christ figure. If you didn't know that, that's. When all the children worship, it's like, Santa will bring me stuff, and that's great. Um, okay. Uh, in any case, the, 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 the fact that Elon's sort of 
toting this idea of freedom of speech, but then personally holding a grudge. It's no better than, I mean, the point he's trying to make, it's no better than um, the people who were just arbitrarily, uh, Andrew Tate, that's the guy's name. If they're going to let Andrew Tate back on and, 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 and Trump back on, they, they can let fucking Alex Jones back on. He, he's going to pay, fi- he has to pay $50 billion uh, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Drink it. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. And wait. And brought to you by Pfizer. Fuck you. Pay me. Yeah, and, and also we let Coca Cola in the schools, which is completely destroying our children. Um, so you know why not Satan too? But bring Alex Jones back. Bring Alex Jones back. Elon Musk. And so. I've been, you know, I, I'm, I've been on the fence with Elon Musk, right? Like, I'm not sure how to feel about him because on one sense, you know, he's hanging out with Bro Jogan and fucking, you know, smoking blunts and, and doing all these wild things. And I love space and technology is fascinating. And, you know, and the way he talks, like his idea of bringing Twitter you know, back and, and making it a space, like a, a, a free space to speak your mind. I, you know, I, I really respect those aspects. And then, and then of course there's the, what, what's the chip company where they want to put a chip in your head? Um, son of a bitch. What's that called? Uh, Elon chip in head company. <laughs> Neuralink, Jesus Christ. Uh, Musk found Neuralink in 2016 with the goal of developing a device that, after being implanted in a human brain, would allow a computer to translate person's thoughts into action. He wants to not only treat the brain diseases and disorders, but cure them. So I was I was watching this fucking, of all people, Glenn Beck, who I used to fucking hate. Now I just, I don't. I, I, I've never, I haven't listened to him, honestly, only to hear this one interview he did with this, um, with this journalist who's, who's really, really fucking interesting, man. Like she is, is right on her name's Whitney Webb. Um, and you know, they were talking, he said he was talking to, um, Kurtz, Kurtzweil, um, who is a, I think he's a transhumanist who wants to have like nanotechnology, release the bots into our body. And so they can cure diseases and do all these things. And, and Glenn Beck asked, asked him, like, hey, um, so what, 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 what stops you from turning those off or turning those bots against us? And Ray Kurzweil was like, well, we just wouldn't do that. Not us. And that sentiment, right? Like that sentiment is like you're putting so much trust into this technology and the people who run it. And it only seems to me to benefit them. Like if you're if you're talking about a company that's looking to make money, your only goal is to make more money. And and most of the time, these companies aren't really taking the moral high ground, right? Like like Elon Musk isn't taking the moral high ground by promoting electric vehicles when you have. These cobalt mines in Africa, in South America, I think, uh, where children are being fucking, you know, losing arms and shit, uh, digging out cobalt for our, our our stuff, and the amount of energy that goes into mining this stuff, uh, you know, it, it, the amount of pollution that goes into these the water, it, it's it's really crazy uh, to think that that's going to that is going to uh, that is going to stop global warming in some way, it, like by polluting more and these and the shipment and and the mining of it itself. These big machines that take what fossil fuels, and I'm not over here shilling for the fossil fuel uh, <laughs> industry either, but I I do I do uh, you know I do worry that you know where is this electricity coming from to power these grids to charge these batteries for these 60 to to like, you know, a million dollar cars that most people can't afford. Where's that going? Uh, if I talk about Toyota, then I get an ad on my phone. What if the ads can hear your thoughts? (laughs) Yeah, that too. Right. So that fuck dude, that, that too, 
ads are going to be so tailored to your likings, your memories, right? They're going to be able to go into your memory and, and dig up that that memory of you and and grandpa or you know hunting or you and grandma making bread and remembering the smells and the sounds and 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 the music that was playing and it's going to be able to seep into those memories right and, and to sell you fucking yeast right fucking whatever <laughs> whatever they're trying to sell and they're going to use those thoughts against you to to truly manipulate you uh what is it okay how what if i don't want to vote for this guy but i want to vote for this guy right like are they going to be able to manipulate you with your memories with with new information like how is that going to how is that going to work right like if there's a narrative like it is now if we are if we are telling, yeah, I know naders, but, but they don't have a chip in our fucking head. That's, that's like really, uh, manipulating us in that way. Um, if, if, if we already judge people of color for voting for Republicans or for Trump or whatever, if, 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 if people are, are already like just willing to call people Nazis for, for doing what they're not supposed to do as a, as a person of color, how is that going to translate when the, powers that be because we got to remember where these ideas are coming from they're coming from this sort of technocratic state we're we're, we're going into uh they're coming from these ivory league elites they're coming from uh people who are funding these 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 projects funding Neuralink. who is funding this shit who where where's the money coming from um, you got to think that those people have interest and if they want something to happen, then what stops them from just making it happen when you have a fucking chip in your head? What stops them from just turning it off or uh, where's the laptop? Um, you know, it's bad enough that our phones are constantly listening to us. Our, our, our Alexa is constantly listening to us. Our fucking... They can turn on our phone whenever they want. They can turn on any of these electronics. They can just do whatever they have to do. They, they don't. It, it, Prism Operation Prism uh, is that what it is? Was it Pegasus or Prism? Where it was when we found out that the NSA was listening and these these they like we are so past that stuff. The stuff that Snowden revealed to us. Um, it, it, it doesn't even matter anymore. There's no privacy. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Privacy is gone. It's no such thing. No such thing. It doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, there's only an idea that privacy exists. I mean, now you can get, you can have privacy if you fucking, you know, don't have any electronics that especially smart electronics, no internet. You live out in a fucking cabin somewhere where <laughs> you're just completely cut off from the world. And yeah, you got privacy. But you also don't have, like, fucking Uber Eats, bro. <laughs> you don't want Uber Eats? Make a Faraday case. That's true, too. Uh, what is that, the lead casing? Oh, you got one? I, of course you do. <laughs> of course you got a Faraday cage. If you guys don't know what a Faraday cage is, it's, uh, I'll show you. So... Uh, there we go. Faraday, a Faraday shield is an enclosure to block electromagnetic fields. A Faraday shield may be formed by a continuous covering of conductive material, or in the case of Faraday cage, by a mesh such materials. Faraday cages are named after science Michael Faraday, who invented them in 1836. A Faraday cage acts uh, operates because the external electrical field caused by the electric charge within the cage's conducting material is to be distributed, so they cancel the field's of, uh, effect in the cage's interior. The phenomenon is used to protect sensitive electronic equipment, for example, RF receivers, from external radio frequency interference, RFIs, uh, often during testing or alignment of the device. They are also used to protect people and equipment against actual electric currents, such as lightning strikes and electrostatic discharges. Since the enclosing cage conducts current around the outside of the enclosed space and none passes through the interior. So there you go. Um, 
<clears throat> you can make one with two different sized metal trash cans. Hmm. That's interesting. Shut up, shut up. <clears throat> Here we go. Faraday cage garbage can, really? And easiest Faraday cage to make and one of the absolute best for a non-professional, non-military situation. Just a residential guy like me. This is a, uh, a steel garbage can I picked up at um, Home Depot yesterday. And it is going to be my fair. In fact, it is my Faraday cage. It is. Um, you can use steel. You can use aluminum, uh, copper, uh, any of those. Uh, <laughs> no, you're a conspiracy analyst, okay? Nate, you're just a conspiracy analyst. The materials are, are very good in repelling um, the, the high-frequency uh, waves that come from an EMP or a solar burst. Now, does solar it work? Solar flares, too. Uh, you can tell it's not grounded. It's sitting here in the middle of my uh, driveway here. There's no grounding on it. But how can you tell whether it works? How can you test how to see if a Faraday cage works? How can we test? Uh, some people say microwaves work. How can, how can you tell? Do you stick a cell phone in there? Do you, what do you do? Well, take a look. Hear that? Oh, it's gone. Hear that? What you do is you stick an FM radio inside of your Faraday cage and see if it works. Now what's interesting, when I put this radio in, if I have the lid on, you can still hear the radio playing. Let me get a little closer. And when I bring the lid over, it's still playing. I don't know if you can hear it. But when I put the lid down, now all I hear is static. There is absolutely no music at all. Open it up a little bit, just a tad, break that seal, and you can hear it. Well, what's it lined with? That is going to keep the signal out. Just put my finger down in here, just break the barrier, and that is enough. Top of this piece of uh, uh, cardboard here and drew a circle around it. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. A little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch, and cut this out. Um, and then I put slits in here about every six inches or so, of, oh, maybe about every foot, because the narrower- Who the fuck's weed whacking right now? What a dick. The bottom and is at the top. So now it fits snugly- Double line, All the way mine, from the bottom to the top. And I just taped direction. it here to hold it in place. Um, and then also for the top, what I did is I just took the lid, put the lid right on here. So it's just cardboard? Just... That's all he's using is just cardboard and a trash can? Some foil around it. That way I've got a shield around this and it's inside of a shielded container. That's called a nested Faraday cage. Um, I'll do a report on, on this uh, shortwave radio uh, in another video, but it, uh, so I bought them search on EMP bag. About every cut with my razor knife there, I'm going to put in all my um, electronics for my solar panels, my charge controller, my inverter. Um, I'm putting in, mm. of course, my shortwave radio there, AM, FM shortwave radio. I see. So it, it just in case like an EMP goes off or a solar flare, you can still have working electronics. That's interesting. Anyways. So that brings us to my questioning of Elon Musk. And I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I feel like he he's he's a Lex loser. I don't know, man. Like uh, let's watch this because she does she does a great job of explaining this. She does an amazing coverage of Jep Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, she she covers the Jeffrey Epstein and she wrote two 
dense volumes. Any four wheeler that runs off Magneto is safer. Ooh, that's dope. Explain what transhumanism is and why it is so dangerous. Yeah, so I'll just uh, probably start with the history of it. Um, so there was a man named Julian Huxley. He's the brother of the famous Aldous. author Aldous Huxley. He was president of the British Eugenics Society. The mm -hmm. United Nations is created um, after World War II. He is put in charge of UNESCO. In writing his vision for UNESCO, Julian Huxley says about eugenics, we need to make the unthinkable thinkable again. 10 years later, he coins the term transhumanism and talks about how the new eugenics is going to be merging uh, man with machine. So this is basically eugenics rebranded. And a lot of people that funded eugenics causes of the past, like the Rockefeller family, are mm -hmm. you know, big proponents of transhumanism today. If you look, for example, at the new head of the FDA, who very few people have bothered to look into, um, Robert Califf, he's a former Google Health executive. Uh, Google Health has a joint venture with Glass Maxo Smith Klein, uh, called Galvani Bioelectronics. I think the former head of that was Monsef Salawi, who was in charge of Operation Warp Speed. Their focus is what they call bioelectronic medicine, which is, uh, you know, injectable nanotechnology that can right. manipulate your central nervous system. What are the implications of that? We have the person that uh, just purchased Twitter making a brain chip company. Mm -hmm. He's also a major contractor to the U.S. military. He has a major conflict of interest uh, with Chinese uh, silicon valley equivalents like tencent he says his work is to find a way to a compete against the transhumanistic you know no folly you don't believe that at all i don't i don't yeah. buy it no uh, okay. if you look at that company they had animal trials many of the monkeys that was tested and died after the brain chip was yeah. put in if that were my company i would reformulate everything or shut it yeah. down if it was going to kill that many animals but it's already moved into human trials this is where it gets frightening well, it's I'm, tied up with depopulation, right? You have this being sort of the new uh, path of eugenics. People like to act like eugenics disappeared, and it hasn't. It's mm -mm. just rebranded. And if you look at the history, it's it's very clear, and it's very disconcerting. So, I don't know. You know, take that for whatever. I, th that doesn't prove much. But this whole conversation is uh, actually well, pretty good. I, don't, I fucking still do not like Glenn Beck. Um, I, I fucking hated him when I was younger, but now I'm just like, I don't know, indifferent, whatever. Uh, but, but it was a good conversation. Uh, and, and she was very revealing and I, I've just been going down the Whitney Webb, um, the Whitney Webb, uh, rabbit hole and so much, so many, uh, really, really good information. Uh, and she's sourced really well. What is the name of her book? So Whitney Webb. And so I don't know if Elon Musk is a is 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 a good guy. Like I don't know. It, 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 I'm I'm leaning more and more towards like fuck that guy. Um, their studio is the old Barney Dinosaur Studio. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, he's doing pretty good for himself. Well, how did he? Didn't he like get fired? Why was he fired from Fox? Was it some? Um, some diddling. Fires. Uh, Tommy Lorraine sues Glenn Beck saying she was fired. Uh, sued her employer. Oh, he left it. He left. Um, He's the CEO of uh, Mercury Radio Arts, parent company television, The Blaze. Oh, so he's doing just fine. He hosts the Glenn Beck radio program, talk radio, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 2011, Beck announced that he would transition off his daily program on Fox News, but would continue to Team Fox. His last daily show on Fox was June 30th, 2011. The Hollywood Reporter placed Beck on its digital power, digital power 50 list. Beck launched The Blaze in 2011 after leaving Fox News. He hosts an hour-long afternoon program on weekdays, a three-hour morning show. Both are broadcasted on The Blaze. Be okay, so he didn't get fired. Um, he just left, which I, 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 it's better than O'Reilly, how he went out. <laughs> Fucking old man O'Reilly. Fucking the diddler. Um, anyways... 
Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about Elon Musk. I'm not sure how to feel about where he's at and and the fact that he's not letting people on because of his feelings like it, to me is such a hypocritical thing he's like one of those people who do feeling facts aren't feelings or whatever or feelings aren't facts kind of guy which you know i i do I, I i get that idea and and i i can get behind it but um still like i don't understand how he could be so eh, whatever fuck alex jones fuck him so the fact that he doesn't want to bring Alex Jones on, the fact that, you know, he's so connected to all these weird transhumanist people and depopulation, this whole thing, man, it, it's, 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 it's wild. So if you don't get to ha to be the richest dude in the world by not like lying or being fucked up somehow, you know what I mean? It's not all just great investments and, and how to run companies. There's something more. He wants Twitter to work so he can talk to us earthlings when he gets to Mars, <laughs> which is fine. That's great. Let him, let him do that. Um, but I, I just don't know how to feel about him. I mean, I just feel like him and his elite buddies are just going to fly to Mars on their little moon base or, or Mars base and, and leave us all behind to burn up. <sighs> So many, so many weird things out there. So many weird things. Sexy weird things, too. Mars is sexy. We watched Lucy last night. Have you guys ever seen Lucy? Heck, I don't even trust myself. You know, I, I, you must trust yourself enough to have a friend like Tommy around. I mean, that you know, trust yourself enough not to, you know, Tommy up the place. Um, but yeah, I don't, it, it, it's just so hard to find anything legitimate anymore. I'm built different. <laughs> yes, yes, you are naders, and I appreciate you for that. Oh, look at this $25 million lawsuit over fucking, over a, a campaign that they fucking, they approved of. So yeah, uh, let let uh, let Alex Jones back on fucking Twitter. Don't be a fucking twat bag, Elon. Don't be a transhumanist. I kind of 